when I'm visible, I'm audible. I am an audible for page freedom. I think yes. Okay, hi everyone. So let us discuss this uh, UPSC CMS questions in ophthalmology. I'm from Saurabh. So let's see the recall and if there is a, any change in the recall, also let me know. I'll tell you the answers according to that. So the first question was a visual field question and it was asked that uh, the patient has contralateral homonymous lower quadrant anopia. Anopia means blindness, quadrant means only one quadrant is having problem and homonymous means for example if I draw this visual field for you always remember the visual field is given as a patient's view means you are the patient so you are telling the people that this is your right Alright, so you are telling the uh, people that this is your visual field, so this is your right visual field, this is the left visual field and it is said in the question homonymous, homonymous means on the same side, so for example I will give you one example of left homonymous, lower quadrant anopia means they are asking this question, just for example, this is homonymous because both the effects on the same side, lower one and one quadrant is affected, now this is left in my example, left uh, inferior, left homonymous inferior quadrant anopia. Now this is like a pie in the sky and that is seen in parietal lobe lesions. But specifically, answer is parietal lobe. But why parietal lobe? Because in the parietal lobe, the optic radiations are passing which are the superior radiation fibers. So this is right eye, this is left eye, I hope you know this optic nerve, chiasma, optic tract, lateral genital body and optic radiations passing through temporal lobe, parietal lobe and occipital lobe. That is the visual pathway. So if there is a for example uh, uh, right side parietal lobe lesion is there. So what happens? The superior radiation fibers are affected. This is the fact. So the superior radiation fibers are affected, inferior defect is there. And behind the chiasma, on the right side if there is, if there is a defect, always it has to be the contralateral homonymous because the crossing has taken place. So for example, if the right side defect is behind the chiasma, the right temporal fibers are not working. That's why right nasal defect like this and left nasal fibers are crossing. So left nasal leads to left temporal defects like this. So it is contralateral homonymous lower quadrantinopia that is pi in the sky that is in an parietal oblique. All right, I'm waiting. Now it's okay. All right, should be okay. Okay, so again I'll start. Uh, so for example, this is the right eye, this is the left eye, this is the optic nerve, this is the optic chiasma, this is the optic tract, this is lateral injury body. These are optic radiations passing through temporal lobe, parietal lobe and occipital lobe. So behind the chiasma, if there is a right side defect, for example, anywhere, optic tract, LGB, uh, optic radiations, right side temporal fibers will not work. So right side nasal defect will be there. And left nasal fibers are crossing and because of left nasal fibers, left temporal defect is there. So always, it, if there is a contralateral homonymous, the lesion has to be behind the chiasma. So even if you rule out, frontal lobe lesions will not lead to visual defects like this. So answer can be temporal parietal occipital lobe. In the temporal lobe, it is a contralateral homonymous 
superior quadrant anopia because the inferior radiation fibers are involved in temporal oblations that was given by a scientist known as MEYER. And in the occipital lobe, it has to be contralateral homonymous or macula sparing because middle cerebral artery is spare. So that's why here the answer is parietal lobe. All right. So that's the first question. I think uh, there should not, not be any problem in that. The visual field topic is a very, very important topic. Yeah, I'm right. I'm reading the uh, chat as well. Uh, Dr. Mukul Dhiman, you don't need to remind me. I am reading the charts as well and I'm doing for you also. Not for myself. All right. So that's let's go to the second question now. The first question is parietal lobe. That is looking like a pie in the pie in the floor. And the, if there is a temporal oblations, the answer will be contralateral homonymous superior quadrantanopia. That is pie in the sky. Who else want? A little bit of uh, learning like Mughal Dhiman. All right, okay. Now let us see which of the following correctly describes the primary position of the right eye in the right third nerve palsy. Now, third nerve supplies all the muscles in the eye except SO and LR. Means in the eye only SO is working and LR means superior oblique and lateral rectus. Superior oblique uh, action is to make the eye go down and lateral rectus action is to make the eye go down uh, out. So the classical position of third nerve palsy is down and out eye. And that is what they asked in the question that the only thing they asked answer is down and out eye in the primary case. That was a similar question asked in INICT as well. If you know, this was the INICT. If uh, you know this question in third nerve palsy, this one, which is not a feature of third nerve palsy, ptosis is also there, down and out eye is there, pupil is dilated because third nerve is an efferent of the pupillary pathway, but already the eye is in abduction position, abduction limitation is not there. A similar question was asked in this down and out eye. Other features can be, ptosis can be there because LPS is not working. Pupil is dilated because third nerve palsy is efferent of the pupil pathway. And uh, light reflex is absent. The near reflex is absent because third nerve is involved in light reflex pathway and near reflex pathway. Can you tell me one answer? This patient will have diplopia in everywhere except one gaze. Mukul Dhiman ji, answer kar sakte ho? The time pass karna hai pe. The patient has diplopia in all the gazes except four options: dextroversion, levoversion, dextrodepression, levodepression. Answer is dextrodepression. When the patient is having dextrodepression, when both eyes are parallel, then the patient will not have any double vision. That is diplopia. Good, good answer. So, if they want to ask a question in uh, Palsy, nerve palsy. I always say the question, image question, they can ask in third nerve palsy, fourth nerve palsy, sixth nerve palsy. In sixth nerve palsy, there will be esotropia because lateral rectus is not working. In fourth nerve palsy, there will be hypertropia because SO is not working, eyeball will go up. In third nerve palsy, the eyeball will go down and out eye, like in this question. All right. Now, diabetic retinopathy is a very, very important topic of PG exam. All of the followings are seen in diabetic retinopathy as a fundus examination. Now, actually, I'll tell you what should be the correct answer, but they have not given the options over here. The most likely, I will give you, microaneurysms are outpouching of the capillary. If there is a capillary, there is surrounding capillary known as pericytes. In diabetic retinopathy, there is a loss of pericytes. So if there is a loss of pericytes, some places pericytes are present. Some are absent, so there is outpouching, there is proliferation of the microvessel uh, that is capillary, that is microaneurysm. So that is generally very difficult to see on fundus examination, but can be seen, of course. And uh, particularly, it is most seen on angiography as a hyperfluorescence. But still, afterwards, uh, that is a very mild, non proliferative diabetic retinopathy stage. Then, uh, what happens after inner barrier break? The blood can come out, 
they can go into flame hemorrhages in the nerve fiber layer it can go to dot and dot hemorrhages in the outer plexform layer so that is also seen in mild to moderate stage now in the proliferative stage there is new vessels can be seen anywhere in the eye if the retina is hypoxic if there is a capillary occlusion retina is hypoxic vegf is released if vegf is released new vessels are seen above the retina above the optic disc can be nvd can be nve elsewhere el, uh, elsewhere in the retina even it can be seen in the nvi iris rubiosis iris can be in the new vessels in the angle and can be new vascular glaucoma any new vessel word is a proliferative diabetic retinopathy stage the first one is a very mild npdr stage second one can be mild to moderate npdr state actually retina thickening so answer is 1 2 4 yeah okay fine answer is 1 to 4 but retina thickening can also be seen in a diabetic retinopathy but actually that is known as diabetic maculopathy that is diabetic cystoid macular edema that is thickening only thickening of the macula but here they are asking maybe diabetic retinopathy maybe the staging that's why the answer is 1 to 4 but actually diabetic macular edema can be seen in any stage of diabetic retinopathy so truly speaking all four should be the answer but they have not given because they must be asking a uh, diabetic retinopathy particularly the etdrs staging sign that's why uh, 1 2 4 should be the most likely answer of this question good clipex and i am shravan as well so that is a diabetic retinopathy question also very important i hope you know the ocular treatment of diabetic systemic treatment is uh, blood glucose control ocular treatment very mild npdr follow up any follow up any, every one year mild to moderate npdr follow up 6 months severe to very severe is a etdrs staging 4 to 1 rule follow up uh, every 2 to 3 months for pdr if there is a new vessels it is pan retinal photocoagulation is a primary treatment secondary is anti vegf injections and now the last question the fourth question which was asked consider the following causes of vision uh, loss which of the following causes have acute vision loss acute scenarios are less of course the gradual causes are more in ophthalmology acute scenarios are less if i just come from cornea to retina in cornea if i say acute vision loss can be acute painful vision loss in infectious keratitis then in glaucoma acute angle closure which is known as acute congestive glaucoma that is acute painful blurring of vision or acute painful vision loss also many secondary glaucomas can be acute uh, vision loss secondary glaucomas not primary glau primary glaucomas are gradual painless vision loss then like secondary glaucomas like lens induced phacolytic glaucoma phacomorphic glaucoma neovascular glaucoma they also can have acute vision loss that is secondary glaucomas some of them then in retina central retinal artery occlusion can lead to acute painless vision loss that is amaurosis fugox in signs there will be cherry red spot in the retina vitreous hemorrhage is a acute vision loss will lead to floaters and then acute sudden painless vision loss uh, there will be dull glow on uh, distant direct ophthalmoscopy cataract of course cannot be the answer over here that is a gradual painless vision loss most common cause and even some retina detachment like regmatogenous detachment can be acute sudden uh, acute painless uh, vision loss like regmatogenous detachment following by like, uh, floaters flashes field effect and sudden painless vision loss even exudative detachment can be sudden painless vision loss the answer has to be 1 2 and 4 that's the question everyone should got uh, should uh, get this question right then optic neuritis uh, can be acute can be uh, gradual so it can also be included but depends on the cause can be acute and be uh, gradual as well and central retinal venous occlusion also can be acute vision loss so these are some causes which can lead to acute vision loss in the options there were only 1 2 and 4 i think that that's uh, what was asked in upsc straight away questions not very difficult also and uh, you could have solved this questions all the four questions could have been solved so one question was in uh, all the four microorganisms were uh, given but uh, like loa loa brugari some snowflake in the cornea but i have told them that uh, has to be taken i think by microbiology because all the four the worms were there there was some characteristic uh, snowflake appearance in the periphery of the cornea um, onco circa was also in the option but i think that will be taken care by microbiology 
all right so that will be all and uh, best wishes i hope you have done uh, all the four questions correct thank you